So, Apple, this time, what have, they, what have they been doing? Well, just two days ago, they, they did an Apple event where they released uh, some cool stuff with some interesting stuff I really wanted to talk, uh, talk about. And I think it's, you know, it's fair enough to make a dedicated video for this. So here's a short overview and reaction of, uh, video of the Apple event in my opinion. Hey yo guys, welcome back to the Family Tech Video. I'm David, like always, and let's get into it. First of all, Tim Cook introduced Friday Night Baseball. Uh, it's exclusive. It's exclusive baseball games for Apple TV on Friday. Uh, personally, I really like to watch baseball, but I'm not sure if I can watch it just because of some issues of region. Um, overall, I think it's a good. It's a, a good addition to Apple TV Plus, just because there's a lack of uh, sports entertainment in Apple TV. Okay, so now let's move into the new iPhone 13 and 13 Pro uh, co uh, colorways. For the iPhone 13, an al the Alpine green colorway is dropped, whilst the uh, iPhone 13 Pro has the normal green. Um, personally, I prefer the, al uh, the Alpine green just because it's more vibrant and has more contrast rather than that light green. But I can see where uh, like most of the uh, colorways for the iPhone 13 are coming. They're, they're, they're trying to keep it neutral in a way, not aggressive. Um, whilst, while we're talking about iPhone, let's talk about the new iPhone SE 3rd generation. Uh, it has now 5G and an A15 Bionic chip, which is also in the uh, Apple's flagship line, the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro Max. Pro and Pro Max. Um, pretty much, it's they're following the same formula Apple used when introducing the iPhone SE back in 2020. Old body, same iPhone 8 case, whilst adding new technological advancements. Uh, I mean, there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of differences, but uh, you could say that the A15 A15 Bionic chip isn't uh, is an important role because it does give deep fusion HDR4 and new photographic styles all in the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro and also 13 Pro Max. Whilst uh, it doesn't have all the video capabilities uh, as the uh, uh, 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max, everything is pretty much the same: same camera, same display, same everything. Now let's talk about the iPad Air. We all love the iPad Air, and the fifth generation just came, and it got. I think it's a quite. It's a huge revamp. One may say it's actually not just because it's the same thing with everything, but with an M1. Personally, I think just because it has M1, it's a game changer. Um, it's pretty much it has the same body, same display, and the only difference are pretty much. Um, Pretty much the uh, the new colorways M1 chip and uh, the better camera and, and also the faster USB-C port. It also gets 5G support and that's pretty much it. Uh, the front-facing camera is now 12 megapixels. Uh, it's an ultra-wide camera allowing to have center stage, uh, which is also which was introduced back in last back last year when they introduced the iPad Mini 6 6 Gen 6 Gen. Um, everything is the same. A nearly the identical battery, identical display, identical fingerprint reader, identical design, and that's pretty much it. Now, we're coming to the most captivating, most interesting product by far this year, because that's like the first event they've done. Now we're talking about the Apple Mac Studio with an M1 Ultra chip and the new studio display. I'm so hyped about this product. So let's start with the Mac, Mac Studio. Um, Mac Studio. Um, it's pretty much a Mac Mini on steroids. <laughs> You pretty much have two Macs stacked up against each other, and um, yeah, pretty much um, it's all, all you know. Pretty much, it's it's a new Mac device. You haven't, or you know, you wouldn't expect a lot from Apple. Um, the um, it's it's powered by two M1 Maxes, basically fused together to create an M1 Ultra, which has a total of 2.5 terabytes of bandwidth per second and a combined memory bandwidth of 800 gigabytes per second. Those are fast numbers compared to the M1, um, M1 bandwidths and combined memory bandwidth. Um, because the M1 Max, uh, because of the uh, M1 Max has a total unified memory of 64 gigabytes, because two of them are fused together, now it supports 128 gigabytes of unified RAM or unified memory. That is a lot of RAM for a uh, for a uh, 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 studio and creative work. It has a 20 core CPU, while 16 of those are high performance cores, whilst the four are, uh, are high efficiency cores. 
It has a 64 or 48 core GPU, whatever you choose to decide right here if you want the M1 Max or the uh, M1 uh, Ultra model. Um, now let's talk about the ports. I mean, it's awesome to see how ports are back in the Mac. And you know, the first thing I saw right away was the SD card. And it just felt so good just to see, just to see the, you know, the app, the, um, what's it called, the SD card. It's so long, it's been a long time since I've seen it. And uh, yeah, now let's talk about the ports. So there are, uh, so like I said, there are four, like, like they said in, in the event, there are four, uh, four Thunderbolt 4 supports. Uh, all four support up to 40 gigabytes per second. Uh, it supports Display 4, uh, has a USB 4 and a USB 3.1, two USB A ports, and an HDMI port, 10 gig uh, Ethernet port, and a 3.5 millimeter Pro headphone jack, uh, headphone audio. Um, on the Max, this is where some of the ports can, uh, you know, hinder your decision. There are two USB C ports up to 10 gigabytes per second, and an SCXC uh, card slot, basically SD card, a uh, UHSS two. Um, whilst on the M1 Ultra, it's two Thunderbolt four ports up to 40 gigabytes uh, uh, per second, and a, a SD card for same as US UHS two. Um, personally, I feel like if you're more into like uh, quick editing, I guess if you're doing creative. You would go in for the more of the M1 Ultra just because it's a bit tad a bit faster. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the Mac Studio. I mean, the whole design itself is an interesting concept. You know, it brings the idea of the uh, Mac trash can back because you know they haven't used uh, a, a um, they haven't used any uh, significant or different design uh, after the Mac trash can, and and it's all interesting to see it come back. I mean. All the power is down on the ground, air is being sucked up through the vents and out the back, just like how the uh, trash can uh, trash can Mac had, where all the air was inside while it was uh, pulling it, uh, while it was being exhausted outside. Um, now let's talk about the price. This is this is the area where you might just cringe because the Mac City of the M1 Max will cost one thousand nine hundred nineteen dollars, while whilst the uh, the Mac Studio, the M1 Ultra, will cost. A whopping three thousand nine hundred ninety dollars. That's that's a lot of money. And if, if you're if you're that guy who wants to spec out the machine, it will cost ex more than exactly eight thousand dollars. That's a lot of money, and your wallet is gonna be crying after you make that purchase. The next uh, product that Apple introduced was the um, Apple Studio Monitor. It's 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 quite interesting how they uh, presented this. It's pretty much. A 27-inch 5K monitor that is pretty much the junior version of the Pro XDR display minus the XDR because it does support XDR. Um, so uh, what's interesting in this thing is the fact that it has it's pretty much an it's like an eye mask but but for display use and and it has an A13 Bionic chip inside it. It's crazy what they've done. Uh, so it has a camera, 12 megapixels, 122 degree field of view. Like the iPad Air 5, it will have a center stage, and it's controlled by the A13 Brown chip, which I think is, I never heard of it before, adding a chip microprocessor inside a monitor. I think that sounds awesome, not gonna lie. Uh, I feel like that extra power, that, you know, uh, that, that will really help out. Uh, uh, that really help out. Whilst it has three uh, USB-C input, inputs, uh, and uh, one Thunderbolt 3 for your display. Um, the uh, the Mac Studio has a the, sorry the Mac this uh, disp Studio display has a triple mic array so three mics and a, a and a six, a six speaker setup that supports Dol Dolby Atmos and spatial audio and that's pretty much it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this family and tech video. Uh, if you really like this type of videos where we see uh, where we have me uh, with the mic and it's just you know, like 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 a like like a nice podcast style. Uh, please uh, leave a comment down. Subscribe, click the link, uh, click the like, and a uh, remember to bell notification. Uh, really appreciate it. Like always, peace.